We are already in July, Women Matters today, and we will talk about attention. And before the usual uh, weather forecast or weather report, <laughs> the check-in. Uh, uh, Monia, will you start? Because you are great in weather reports. <laughs> uh, well, we are waiting for the thunderstorms to start. They have been promised for today, which didn't work out. We had just a slight drizzle. And uh, we are hoping so we don't have to water the garden and yeah, we'll see. So if I just disappear, it's that the thunderstorm, or if Martini disappears, that means the thunderstorms have arrived, but we'll see. Uh, the topic of how to focus our attention on what we feel in us uh, is new to me and I'm practicing all the time now with my husband, which is a lot of fun <laughs> because he likes to yeah, go into negative things. And <laughs> yeah, anyway, so I think it's a splendid topic and I pass on to Martini. Thank you, Monia. I'm in uh, Kritzendorf, close to Vienna. And I'm, we are waiting for the thunderstorm as well because of uh, I didn't give the garden water. And um, I hope that it will come. Um, I had a very good time. I read your... Um, comment, comments about uh, uh, what is our problem of today and uh, I listened to um, Silke uh, Sheep Sheeper she, she is in V Silke Schäfer Schäfer Oh, thank you very much. And she is an astrologian. And um, I, I feel the power of what is uh, going on in the air. And uh, I, I also feel the negative structure in, in uh, everyday life. But this power what, uh, is a challenge for us that everybody gets this uh, um, uh, positive uh, energy. So I give uh, uh, to um, Christine. You're mute. Um, I'm in an interesting transition right now. I think maybe this is an exaggeration, maybe not, but I think the thing I most challenged by is I know a camera is filming on me. I'm spending a lot of money, significant thousands of dollars maybe for a videographer to do something really professional. And he's coming in a few days and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. how do I prepare for that? So um, interestingly enough, I paused in the middle of the yay, 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 and <laughs> decided to say, well, where is my attention? And is that the focus I want to bring? Because I only want to be on camera for a short bit. This is my weather report, by the way. I only want to be on camera for a few moments. And so it really matters what topic is chosen. And I think I'm very comfortable since the whole thing is about the Enneagram. The Enneagram shows us our healthy qualities and our less healthy. And I've been teaching that for 20 years, focus on your healthy, your essence and your healthy personality. And if you see one of your less healthies or disconnected from essence, all that is is a teacher to go, okay, change my attention over to here. So that's just been part of my wiring for decades. And um, so it just kind of sparked that history and the timing of it. Especially today, it was like, wow, okay, I'm all about this. 
in terms of more greater well-being where I can make a difference. So um, that's that. And so I guess I kind of touched on potential topic today and also that's what my weather feels like. <laughs> um, and who wants to go next? Yes. I've lost track, haven't I? I, was I think Gertraud. Hello, Gertraud. That's right, Gertraud. I can see and you, Heidi. I do afterwards, and then I go over and give over to Christine. Okay. So um, my weather report is I, I have been um, at my daughter's, both. <laughs> and the babies are still wrapped up. <laughs> so they are. Uh, but the first one is due on 10th. And so... So I can come anytime. And I was there because her boyfriend had a business. So he couldn't couldn't be there for the week. So I was there. And that was really nice, like having mother, daughter, granddaughter time. Um yeah, to support her and yeah talk about stuff that's coming up and about nursing and it is forbidden to sneeze nowadays <laughs> i'm sorry it's the pollen so i i have to sneeze <laughs> and yeah, and, and there is a project um, coming to closure next week. So, and then I have to, to write it. Um, and we still have nine hours to go. So find out how to, how to manage that within a week. Yeah, so I'm... I'm There, there is somehow a state change and I can see like in the outer world, a lot of stuff happening like Supreme Court decisions and things like that, the war. And, and on the inside, it gets calmer and calmer as there's something in my life like there's so much, so less drama and anxiety and yeah to and and yeah not to make ends meet and things like that so there's things coming in no no prospects and so i'm kind of looking at the world and say uh oh <laughs> what's that and and then being in my bubble it's it's pretty nice and my bubble means included my family <laughs> you look very relaxed yeah yes it's, it's really nice great people around me so Heidi, I pass on to you. Yeah, thank you. So the real weather report is that we still have no rain for months and months and months, no rain, and the garden and our plants are really suffering. So if you have too much rain <clears throat> in Vienna, please send it over. <clears throat> we will be happy. And the other weather report is, uh, I wasn't here last time, and so it wasn't recorded. I was in Germany, and I had many very intense experiences, um, which have also created quite a change, I would say. Um, and I, I don't want to, to miss that, the possibility to, to be in groups where um, 
wonderful things are happening and in person this time, you know, I'm so much used to this, all these little boxes, you know, but in, in person is uh, still another thing to meet people and to have conversations and not only conversations, also other things. I did another workshop of my voice thing. And that was, I realized that I'm still able to do that. And people were uh, enthusiastic about it and said, oh, I didn't ever know that. And people didn't tell me, even when I took singing lessons, they didn't tell me that and things like that. So I was glad that I could help somebody with their, let's say, problems in this field. And as you maybe know, I use uh, teaching voice as a, consciousness training more or less and not only for for not only for having a good voice but to liberate it from the constrictions yeah and um, i heard that you talked about attention last time and so uh, we wanted to continue i mean you wanted and i agree voluntary and um, i give over to to christine to you seem to have brought it up again. And uh, so would you go into it a little bit? You must always unmute yourself before you talk because otherwise <laughs> they don't hear you. <laughs> Here I am. Thank you for reminding me. It's interesting in this moment, uh, it feels fresh with us about the subject of attention that whatever we did last week, last time was felt quite different. And I would certainly turn to Monia to say what she recalls of what we did last time, because I'm the word attention is not vibrating with the last. Yeah, uh, last time we talked about reincarnation, I believe. I have to look up my notes, but I'd rather uh, concentrate on today's topic which okay. came up rather unexpectedly because I found a book by my daughter uh, in my daughter's apartment when I was dog sitting. And uh, well, she's very much in the flow all the time. She's Pisces, <laughs> Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. And she always gets a parking space when she needs one and things like that. So, I thought, well, I never heard of these people. I'm not so triggered by uh, channeling, but uh, these three laws of attraction, the three basic laws of the universe sort of made sense to me. The first one is that you attract, that like attracts like. So people of the same uh, mind are drawn together. And the second is that where you focus your attention, this will manifest. And when you even when you focus your attention, I do not want that. Uh, that won't help. So you really have to focus your attention on something that makes you feel good. And and um, I was wondering because when I was reading Heidi's mail. Uh, about the situation of the world, I've, all of a sudden I felt very miserable. And then I said, well, I'm feeling miserable. What is it? What do I really want? And so I, I never talked about that. And then this mantra of Mantrushri, which is the differentiating wisdom turned up. And I have been using it for a couple of weeks now. And so, I feel that and this, the simple thing is when I get up from, the, from my chair and I prepare dinner, I focus my attention on preparing dinner before I do it and then it manifests. So that's a very simple thing. Um, on the other hand, uh, what really struck me in this book by uh, Esther Hicks, Esther and Jerry Hicks, the law of attraction, is that you have to rely on your emotions. So you really have to be aware of your body and your mind and your soul. Um, and I had it in a different kind of, when I uh, sort of got body react, bodily reactions when people talked narrative that didn't concern the topic. 
then I felt sort of it was a, I don't know, I felt miserable. And so I really rely on my feelings and my intuitions. Um, yeah, and I was very pleased when Christine said that she, this is also the topic she is involved with right now, focusing your attention. And it's not as simple as we think. So Christine, would you like to continue? Sure, thank you for connecting us with where we were and where we are now. It's a, a big help. I, I'm kind of, I'm very humbled. Okay, I'm humbled with the idea that we have this capacity to consciously shift our attention. It's as simple as that. And I think that a lot of people who are very well studied and very sophisticated will maybe make it more complicated, but it really isn't. So a couple of maybe concrete things that I've noticed is that one of the basic ways I work with clients is, okay, so you've identified that you are a four or an eight or a six on the Enneagram. And there are clear qualities that relate to the spiritual essence and personality. And there are clear qualities that show how you make yourself smaller or less healthy qualities. And they use that on a regular basis to apply the Enneagram in their lives. So I've seen incredible results over the last few years. And actually that's why I wrote the book because it, it kind of, I don't know if I've ever shown it to you all, but it's kind of sitting right here and it's full of photographs of each of the nine types. And it begins with a list of the healthy qualities and the less healthy qualities in the introduction to each chapter. So in talking with the videographer, I thought, what is the main theme going to be? And this morning, the main theme was, well, I'm the most passionate about us, we humans, being able to control, isn't the right word, but make a choice. And I do know from Hester, um, the, Hester Hicks and Jerry, that they, they tend to focus on the positive, which is fabulous. And also I wanna, I like opening it up and saying, maybe I wanna focus on expressing my feelings to be authentic with my feelings. Or maybe I want to focus on what would be the healthiest plan? We need a plan here to make things better. What would that be? So it isn't just the umbrella of optimism. It's whatever we choose that might really be a healthy choice for us. That's kind of how I come to make it um, accessible to people without a whole lot, bunch of words. And, and there is some interesting research that says if, because we do this in the United States a fair amount that you must be positive, you must be positive. Well, if you don't feel it, <laughs> you're asking yourself to be something other than you are, and then that is misery. So dropping into what you do feel and what your choices are, um, that's where the Enneagram kind of comes in from my point of view. There might be one quality that I have that helps me feel good. It isn't the choice that I decided to feel good, but I chose something that is authentically who I am and I'm feeling that. And then I'm noticing to use the image that Ronya just used, the dinner is better. <laughs> Whatever quality it is that's inside of me, um, my walk is better or something else nice happens. And it, this morning was just like a lovely message of that. I was working on it and I was trying to be brave enough to address the subject and up, up Pop Monia, <laughs> addressing the choices. And I went, okay, that's part of manifesting in that moment. And it just made things easier for me. So, um, and I've always, whenever, this is the last point, whenever I've thought about people like M. Frank or Victor Frankl or um, all, all these individuals who had to be confined and they held firm, 
and they walked out okay. Not all of them, but many of them walked out okay. In, you know, um, Mandela, he walked out with his some of his inner beliefs intact. So if they can do it in those confinements, that inspires me that we can do it. That it's based it's in our neurological systems to survive. And then the only other part I add to it, because I live in a nature filled area, I watch the animals, the way they, and they, they're always looking, they're always using their attention to either be safe or find food or take care of the babies. And their attention allows them to thrive. Well, our world has gotten so damn complex with news that we get mixed up with where our attentions might be because there's just so much clutter around. But the birds and the bunny rabbits and the squirrels and the deer at the base of my property, they're not watching the news and it's not as complicated to take choice with their attention. Okay, I realize I'm not very eloquent, but that's kind of what I'm noticing. <laughs> over to anyone who wants to take that thought and make it relevant for you. I'll, I'm excited by it and I really, I totally, I mean, I've been able to do some amazing things in my life and it's just because I sort of pictured it. So I've got a history of it, I suppose, that I've kind of taken for granted. But in this conversation, I'm fresh with it and so I'm not just taking it for granted. I'm looking at it as from with new eyes, with us, okay? So there we go. All righty, I'm turning. I did a brain training once and this teacher said um, that the if the brain is, solely I mean like if if it's only a mind thing so I'm thinking um, then the new ideas or so don't last long, longer than three weeks so you can still remember it but it fades away and you have to feel your body has to know it's not only feeling like emotions but like a bodily feeling. So your body has to feel it, to sense it. So it can like have an imprint and, and then lo really last long. And, and he also said, um, we are coming to earth with uh, like our default nature is like you have a yeah, the, the pre-installed in a, in a computer is looking for mistakes, looking for something that might be dangerous. And then uh, like automatically, if there's a danger, we're automatically there. But, but our default thing in conscious mind is to look for possible dangers. And, and so if we have, if we want to create something that's not default um, the, from all the clutter. In, so our, our minds, they, they think about 60,000, uh, 100,000 thoughts per day. So, and, and they do whatever they do. And to, to, so they have to be aligned, meaning giving attention, giving thought to, to to, to be able to manifest. And that in combination means to, yeah, that, that we feel and sense in our bodies and have that it's, it's also not only a vision, but to, to feel it, <laughs> to feel what, what, where you want to go. So you feel it right now what's ahead of you, so to say, in, in the material world. Mm. And that this combination has to be there so it can really like quickly manifest. Otherwise something happens. Mm. Mm. That's a very oh. wonderful point. Because the phrase I use for that 
is not feeling because feeling we think of with heart. I call it visceral sensation. Yeah, yeah. Visceral sensation from our toes to our head. We're vibrating with that. Yeah. With what the mind and the heart are suggesting. When the whole body is, is then things really click. Yeah, yeah. And that's what dispenser as well says. He, yeah. He yeah. has also the, all the research with it. He did some amazing. He did some amazing things. Yeah, and one thing is that the heart knows first. Yep. So the heart is the first one to. So a little bit before the mind knows. Yep. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And the heart holds it. The heart holds it more easily too. The mind can go skitter scatter, but the heart can hold that intention. I think with a little bit more grace. So yeah, it's a beautiful description that you have, that you own. <laughs> it's really, really lovely. Yeah. Well, I'm amazed, Christine, that your body is yodeling. <laughs> it's, in <laughs> it's in resonance. It's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> my, that's kind of that's embarrassing. Oh my goodness. A yodeling? Yodeling. It's almost almost. Like yodeling. <laughs> Should I should I do a check on that one and invite it out the window? <laughs> okay. Uh, all of a sudden, it came to me how we ended last time, but maybe I'll I'll go to that uh, towards the end of our conversation, and because then we can maybe find a bridge to next time. Okay. So focusing attention. You said it's more a visceral thing as well. Um, to me, it, it as long as I have been practicing it for long now, but whenever it comes to my attention, uh, I notice that I have a choice, as you said before. And the choice is um, feeling good. So uh, why shouldn't I want to feel good? Uh, as far as I understand it, the soul or the eternal part of us feels good. And uh, why shouldn't I connect to that? So uh, to me, this is a reconnecting to the soul. Mm. And yeah. And I always have a choice to do that. I do it by mantras, as I frequently have mentioned, because when I use a mantra, I sort of cut off what's just going on in my mind and then things get easier and clearer. Okay, Martini. Um. I was pleased that you uh, mentioned the soul and um, what we were talking about. I do um, experience it that the soul is a, um, a being what is seeing. And um, it is already there and we are not aware of it. And when this happens, this is, we get the energy of the light. This is um, what is vibrating in the air. And, and then you know, I notice, Martini, that's fine. Stay in this um, um, energy and everything is going uh, as it is going and not like uh, what my uh, what I want to feel it good or bad uh, I try not to be in duality I try I, I get it as a present to be non-dual uh, on my way. That is what you mentioned, uh, Monia, that um, you you experience that your soul is giving you a good feeling. And this is what I experience in um, stay with it, concentrate on it and do the, give the best what you can do. And if it is not uh, good enough, okay, 
it's not good enough. I do not judge because I just can be present and nothing else. And I think this is so simple. And I, I, um, I have a little bit of problem if, if we are going in the theory of uh, the Enneagram. I have studied it for years and, and I never think of the Enneagram. And I, this is a beautiful um, experience for me that I, in this moment, I do not need a theory. And uh, Christine, I think it is beautiful if, if you are uh, talking about the theory, but I cannot do anything with it. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, but the, the experiences of all day life are so um, dynamic. And this is what is going on in the air at the moment, yeah? The new um, uh, uh, chance we have that things are changing. And for everybody, not, not uh, just for uh, certain people, no. Uh, this is the... the uh, this is the... Uh, the just the <laughs> generosity yes beautiful the generosity of of um the time where we are living in it is very dangerous because very evil um energy is also going around but the other energy the love is also there and what uh, we have the um, responsibility to choose the love and to set it into the world, manifest it. Yeah, and I, I, I thank you very much for the theory around it and, and, and uh, what we discussed already. Thank you. I give over. Heidi, do you have thoughts about this? Yeah, I was thinking before when you said that we humans with attention, um, we, I don't get it together, but I was thinking about, for instance, uh, animals. They also have uh, the way to, to be attentive without consciously being attentive, but they have in their own um, in their natural way they have also this attitude to look out for for dangers but not all the time maybe the difference is that we are able to to make it the first uh, priority despite there is no immediate danger around while animals are reacting to immediate dangers and we can also react to um, uh, uh, I mean, the memories or something where we find dangers in. So in this way, yes, attention on, uh, on other things can take us out. And you were talking about the um, attention on the body. I normally use that for getting, getting out of my, my head and my too, too many thoughts. And normally I succeed only when there is something very over emotional, then it takes a long time to get out. But I sort of always um, attend to what is going on in my in my body and also in my mind. And uh, I lately um, met a practice where where they say to to connect all the the senses, the attention on all the senses, to have them at the same time. Uh, put not only on one thing the attention, but on the stream of uh, of the different, uh, let's say, modalities. And I do think I'm able to to put attention on the audit, on the on the sound, on the body, and on the uh, visual, on the vision, but not really on on the others. When I um, smell something or nice or not so nice, then I'm completely taken by that. And mm -hmm. it's not something which is continuously going along. So, yeah, 
That's what I, I wanted to say to attention. So you can feel, you can feel the conscious moment sometimes to shift it. If it's moving towards something that you're saying, ah, I'm not so sure I want to go in that direction, but you. Oh yeah, that's always possible. You're always, always in charge of yeah. the choice anyway, looking at the choice. But sometimes it needs really then a conscious decision and work. And sometimes it's easy to, to get out into another into another modality, you know. It depends also on the mood. Right. And it depends on your, you know, you, the, the, the situation in which you are. When you have a, a quiet day, for instance, nothing horrible happens, then it's much more easy than when you had a, an argument with somebody or something and it's still oh. sort of yeah. lurking around. So, uh, yeah. Theoretically, no. it's possible all the time. Practically, maybe not all the time. So that kind of raises, and it, I really appreciate the way you put that because it raises a question. Like we've, in general, we've got the mind that can somehow help to shift. The heart can help us shift and the body awareness can and our sensing. So most of us probably have a lead dog within us that is the first place we can go to, to count on, to shift. Either for some people it's more this, others it's more the heart, and some is just the overall body. And then if we can have one that we know we can count on, I'm just raising the question, maybe let that be the lead and let the others come along. Okay, okay, I'll follow you. Cause that feels like a wise way to shift. Yeah, and what I notice is when I'm really grounded in my body and in the awareness of the body, then I can admit thoughts again without uh, them taking me around mm -hmm. uh, in their own in their own mm -hmm. way. You know, mm. that's really profound because most of the little bit of research that I know about it, and there's not a lot, is that when the body's grounded, it can really lead us. And in the heart and the mind can come in accord with it. Because just think about how huge this is, our nervous system throughout the whole body, right? If we're really grounded, we can stand still to make a choice. So I love the way you put that. Uh, did I understand you correctly that each of us has a preferred way to enable the shift? It's a good guess. I don't know that it's researched, but yeah. Yeah, my bias would be if the body is really grounded, it sure makes everything else easier. Mm -hmm. Or uh, other people resort to meditation, I guess, just to still their mind and enable a shift, which usually enables a shift. Yep. Uh, Others resort to sex, right. um, is my guess. Um, you're, smi you're smiling with that one. <laughs> I'm grinning. I'm not smiling. I'm grinning. <laughs> um, That's a lovely giveaway for all of us. Thank you. <laughs> no longer, but it was nice. Um, so once we know which enables us to shift, uh, to refocus our attention. So how we do how do we make use of that? Um, I would like to say that I am not aware of myself at that moment at all. Mm -hmm. So it's transcending the ego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think then you don't have to do much if the shift happened. It's more happening. <laughs> yeah, thank you. 
and I would I would love, I don't know if I ever read the manifesto we came up with, the appreciation manifesto. Did I? Heidi remembers. I think so, I think so but it's quite a time ago. And I, I, I was just thinking, because that sums it up somehow, <laughs> what we were talking about. So if I may, I would do that so right away. Appreciation Manifesto, our understanding of appreciation. Appreciation starts with a clear view on what is. Too often we automatically substitute what is with focusing on mistakes and weaknesses only. By shifting to appreciation, it enables letting go of one's own viewpoint and beliefs in service to seeing alternative possibilities. Appreciation means living from a place of benevolence towards oneself and life with a focus on what is good and provides the opportunity to learn and grow through all experiences, even challenging ones. Being in a state of full appreciation enables one to see a desired future possibility, embody that, and bring it into the present with freedom and ease. The appreciators. So. Just beautiful. Um. So it is a state of appreci appreciation, you said, a state, not a stage, as Wilbur would differentiate. Can it become a stage? I think it's hard to be in the teal and turquoise and whatever without being able to appreciate because when you say there is something good in every level that means you have to appreciate that even if it's only partial but yeah to to say okay whatever happened might not be good as such and what can I put my attention on to see what, what I learned from that or whatever. As you mentioned, teal. So teal would be the stage where you can continually, continuously appreciate and be beyond your ego. And I don't know if that's... Uh necessarily so so in that you're beyond your ego in teal some i think they <laughs> they know well <laughs> they have a pretty <laughs> nice one um but yes yes i mean to to go into this okay i can see the the good parts or the the healthy parts or whatever in 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 a healthy red in a health yeah so whatever that might be and not said red is bad <laughs> green is bad i i don't know so this is what i learned that integral e so shifting to integral means i'm able to see the different levels from yeah. that angle and not making them wrong anymore the dynamics of red, the empathy of green. So it's, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, Atini wanted to say something, I think. No. If we see the um, symbol of um, black and white of yin and yang, and uh, it and, and we have to um, uh, embody this 
And I think this is what you uh, wanted to say, Gertrud. Um, and uh, I do feel um, it is a kind of an enlightenment. I once wrote an, an, uh, um, an uh, small uh, part, is this enlightenment in the beginning when we met each other. And um, I, I can't, I don't know where it is now. But uh, I think uh, to be in contact with the light and to be open for it um, at the given moment, it is just, um, it is a help. It's, it's, it helps. And uh, it, is, it is easy. Uh, also, if, if I'm not in a good mood, then I accept my good, not good mood as well, just as, as it is. And I think this is so uh, relaxing. I, I can, I allow myself to be not in a good mood or to do nothing and just sit and, and uh, I think this is enlightenment, this is kind of an enlightenment. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't say that you cannot be enlightened in teal. I just said that teal in itself doesn't mean that this person is enlightened. So that, that's what I meant. I'm, I'm curious if some of us notice that when we're dealing with ourselves, we can have that sweet compassion to make space for whatever's showing up. And when someone comes into the door who has a certain pattern in personality, which can be um, potentially really irritating, frustrating, and um, even bigger words, which I don't need to go into. Do we notice that making a choice then is more difficult or are some of us just able to stay in an even place no matter who may walk in the door with their stuff? Stuff is a very sophisticated word. <laughs> I would say it depends a little bit uh, if this person has the power to tr trigger you. Mm -hmm. If not, you can be quiet. Yeah. Oh, interesting how he behaves or something like that. <laughs> but if you're something, triggered, yeah. 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 Uh, when we were sitting on the, on the balcony and having dinner, somebody who lives also in the house trained his dog. At least he tried to train the dog. Bring, come here, bring. And then he hit the dog and I was just standing at the balcony and I noticed, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> as you mentioned, some people uh, or some actions still trigger me. At least I don't approve of them. And my husband, we just looked at each other and happily to be together in the same mood <laughs> of that person. But um, yeah. I guess uh, there are always some trigger points that uh, you have to be very careful about. But I noticed, I noticed it while I was standing there, I noticed this person really is able to trigger me. But of course, there was already a distance to what mm. you were doing. Mm, that's a great yeah. example. Yeah. Because I think that from the way I deal with personalities, you know, not the theory, but just the, the raw materials of the personality, the healthier, the less healthy. Each of us sometimes has some place where we're more vulnerable, a certain pattern that I can only grit my teeth. And so they're like red flags that are teachers that invite me to stay. I'm not saying I do it, but there's an invitation to stay in my heart and not, not be triggered. Because I think, I think that Heidi used that word perfectly. It's like to know what your triggers are is part of maturity. And again, that's not theory, that's practicality, that's visceral, that's in my body. And if we know what that is, we can go, 
click, click. My peace is more important and I can love that person, whatever they're up to. Not easy. I don't do it, I have, but I have the theory, I have the thought going on. <laughs> I was thinking of another possibility and um, which is not so about personal triggers, but when you are in a good we space together, and something comes, somebody comes in with a different, completely different energy. It's uh, disturbing the energy and not necessarily you, yourself, or the other person in the room, but, but the whole um, existing energy among the people. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because we are, we are energetic beings basically energetic beings and we pick it up whether we know how to process it or not we can feel it shift a room like you just said and the brain does like what the hell is going on now all of a sudden things feel different is it the brain who's feeling that or what is it well the nervous system yeah energy shift yeah the whole nervous system throughout the whole body i mean i'm saying brain but it's the whole well, we could welcome a shift in the energy to change, but we don't. We like it to stay as it is. Isn't that so? Preferences. Mm -hmm. It depends what you wanted to, to do and to be mm -hmm. at this moment, you know. Sometimes it's a disturbance, sometimes it can help. Right. It's um, uh, the body is this what um, what is called the pain body that uh, we uh, we are not the pain body if we are aware of it is this uh, uh, and that we we just can Well, I don't know if if the term pain body at all invented. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how much it applies uh, in this connection. So it's uh, actually I don't even know exactly what he means by it. Is this your? I think that's your, the, yeah. Get I think that's the collection of all. I'm, I don't mean triggers as something that is like triggering you right away and you have to explode, but that gives you, yeah, that resonates with old wounds mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's what, what that which is not healed yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so. the sort of a memory and not only your own, but also a collective memory. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and okay, thank you. I guess in some right now, it's like we're all we're all far more com we're far more complex than usually we're conscious of. <laughs> the information that's coming our way that we who knows what percent we're able to actually notice. And I would like to refer to what Heidi said, that there is, I would call it the larger we, um, that is either pain body driven or, or in flow or whatever, then that if there are some people together, then there, or even me being in, in this world, there is a larger we. Uh, that we belong to and we can be conscious of and we can invite it to our endeavors or conversations and maybe we could do that next time just really to to be aware of of that <laughs> and listen from there and okay, so this is a suggestion for a topic next time I was people. just thinking we, to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, not just we are separate people and we have thoughts and then we talk and things like that, but to to Cohen, Cohen uh, we had exercises. Uh, Cohen had some very useful exercises for reaching the larger we, and we practiced that, that we we achieved it. 
So, but it were mostly women, and of course, one man disturbed it. And they said, <laughs> "What is that?" He 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 he. That's nice. Yeah. Um, uh, can we bring this to an end? And then I would like to remind Gertrude of something she promised. <gasps> God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really enjoyed this talk about attention focusing and maybe I will find some new aspects when I go into this deeper into the Hicks theories. Um, yeah, it's a basic that I'm sort of getting material from channeling and uh, I always was very suspicious of channeling. But Jane Roberts was very good also. So yeah, that's my checkout. And I pass on to whoever feels ready. I would just wanna say thank you for the openness with this. It um, came at a very good time for me to help with the next steps. And I think my experience of it has been I just have a different vocabulary. And so I really appreciate the, the words that are sensitive in this group, because you all have been together for a long time in many ways. And um, I'm grateful for that and learning with you. So thank you. Another interesting and warming <laughs> conversation. Yeah, thank you. Love the phrase, the only thing we humans can control is our attention. Mm. We think we control a lot of things, but the only thing we really can control is our attention. That's kind of humbling. And mighty. Mighty, yeah. Yeah. For the greater, for the less greater, right? Christine, but why do many people have uh, no concentration on... Uh, um, they cannot concentrate for the, and they cannot bring up the attention. You, you are saying this is the one thing that we can um, right. our attention. Yeah. Because it leads, it unfolds everything that we are thinking about and feeling. It rolls out from there. I just think a lot of people aren't um, looking at that concept. I don't think the concept is in common um, language. I think that Martini wanted to talk about the attention deficit that people cannot maintain the yes. attention on a point. And actually it's very difficult. I mean, yes. you have to train that. And yes. Sometimes it works better in some things and when you are really engaged in something and sometimes it doesn't, you know, so it, it slips away. Like yeah. the thoughts when you have you want to put attention on your thoughts and then all of a sudden you are inside your thoughts, you know, so the attention <laughs> has, has gone away and things like that. Mm. So um, I think we have trained in our society of today, we have trained people to, to be not attentive, to be disruptive all the time and, and go for something else and be attracted by all sorts of stimulus, I think. And that might have been deliberate or by, by chance because we have all these gadgets to, to, to play with. And then there comes up, oh, email from blah, 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 or message from blah, blah, blah. So it's all the time a distraction, which is interfering with uh, attention. And if people are 
convinced that they are, allow themselves to be distracted all the time, then I think the, the ability is, is decreasing. And I feel it too, but also I, I'm, I succeed quite well a long time to be attentive. But if I uh, agreed and always have the telephone and see what people are sending me, I, I don't do that because then you get get crazy. I wait until I'm on the computer and then I, I, I check the emails, but not before. So for to avoid to get too much scattered, no? because I think we already are, and that's even getting worse. But I wanted to say another thing before when you when you talked about the higher we, I immediately um, was aware of when I did the, um, I told you about the session which I had with a medium, and she said that there are two light uh, beings on my sites. And when I concentrate on these, it's completely different situation immediately when I, when I be, I mean, I remind myself that they are here, then my attention has a different quality. Mm. And that's very nice. I love that. Mm -hmm. What's beautiful is you put your attention on the light beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the possibility that they are here or on no. the feeling that they are here, you know, on yes. both sides. Yeah, something that's beautiful. Like that. that's, that's a huge step for anyone, right? To, to recognize, I'm curious that they're there maybe right now. There's where my attention is. This is exciting. an expansion of attention in some way, an expansion. Feels that way, yeah. Yeah, thank you. What is it what Gertraud has promised? Just a minute, Martini wanted to say ah, okay. Uh, this is, Heidi, what you said, the big me, the, the bigger me, the light. Mm -hmm. If there are two persons or uh, the light is within you, then you are uh, one with the, the bigger uh, person. Uh, so the, no, not the bigger person, but the bigger me or we. Uh, the, the Einheit, the, the oneness with, with, with the light. Yeah, I don't feel it as light, but I feel it as presence. Mm -hmm. As what? As a presence. Presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fine. Thank you very much yeah. for this nice talk. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Gertrud mentioned last time about ascension. And she yeah. sent us a link and it didn't work, the link. I know. Oh. I have um, I have to go back to, to the, the one who sent it to me mm -hmm. because it, it's the, the link he sent and it's not working anymore. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, maybe he has an other access yeah but could you just give the three uh, components again it was compassion uh, praise it, it praise. was praise or i would say appreciation <laughs> but, uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. praise um gratitude and love gratitude. and and the fourth one is uh cognition cognition. What, did, what was it uh, the title of that thing Shai is the station, the, the meditation practice. Oh, you know it, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was talking when and and I had a link where a teacher is teaching, and this doesn't work anymore. So I have to go back to to the person okay. who sent it to me. And uh, Gertrude mentioned that she does this every evening before she goes to bed, this meditation, and every morning when she wakes up and whenever yep. she can. Yeah. So uh, I was while driving or yeah, I was just yeah. wondering if I could sort of curb my nightmares, which uh, <laughs> I haven't had uh, the past days. Come to think of it, so maybe it's working. By the way, I had um, um, I had two, and when I was in Hamburg, I had two very like vivid dreams, but not nightmares. No, a vivid dream is okay. That's yeah, well, uh, I, I, I don't recall them normally, but these, uh -huh, these were oh, really were vivid, yeah. So it's praises. Maybe because of our conversation. 
Good, okay, good. so this is something I'm still open for and focusing my attention on. <laughs> I will good. I will find out. Okay, fine. And I want to invite the teachers, but I'm not sure when they are willing yeah. and yeah. able to come yeah. from yeah. from um, Finland. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I'm wishing the grand, what are you, a becoming grandmother? <laughs> yeah, expecting grandmother. Expecting grandmother, all the best. Yeah. Uh, and your daughter, to your daughters too. Yeah, you will yeah. get noticed. <laughs> Very good. So thank you, girls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. we have a topic for next time and the larger we. And I, I wrote it down. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.